right, so before we start talking about instantaneous motion, let's start by talking about motion between two points in time, which really means a way of saying average motion. So again, to keep track of where the object is located at any point in time, we're going to talk about the position. And so the position we're going to denote by vector r, and, and it's got components x, y, and z telling us what's its x position, its y position, its z position, and so as a vector, we're just going to write this as xi hat plus yj hat plus zk hat. Let's limit ourselves to motion within the xy plane for a moment, just in terms of the picture, though we'll include talking about what's going on in z. But in our picture, so let's let z equal zero, well here is our object at some point in time. Here it is at position x, position y, so here are its x and y coordinates, its z coordinate is zero. If I'm interested in what happens at some, as it starts there and moves somewhere else, so here it is initially at some x initial, y initial, here it is at some final position, x final, y final, and so the displacement is defined to be a vector subtraction problem. It is literally the difference between the the final uh, position vector and the initial position vector. So final minus initial of position vectors. That's what the displacement is. So what that means is, again, like any, vol uh, like any vector equation, I've got one equation per dimension here. And basically my equation in x tells me that I want the change in x. And so this is just x final minus x initial. My equation in y is, is I want change in y, y final minus y initial. My equation in z is I want change in z, z final minus z initial. So this means that here is the displacement, right? It's telling me that I started here and went there. It's a vector that goes from my initial point to my final point. And then the components of my displacement, in terms of calculating it out, are just the x component of the displacement, delta x, is final minus initial in x. Delta y, final minus initial in y. That's the y component. Delta z, final minus initial in z. So, again, if I have a one-dimensional problem, I only need one equation. Two-dimensional problem, two equations. Three-dimensional problem, I need all three equations. The average velocity, and so one of the ways we'll talk about the velocity is we'll talk about its instantaneous, an object's instantaneous velocity, but we'll also talk about its average velocity. And the average velocity is defined to be the displacement of the object divided by the chunk of time. So we said that this is a motion of an object between two points in time. So delta t here is just how long, uh, how long did the clock run between when it was at its initial position and it was at its final position. So this again is still the, that's still the displacement vector. So this is r final minus r initial. And now we're just going to divide that by this scalar in terms of time. So you'll notice, again, we've got the same x components now just divided by, by delta t, same y component divided by delta t, same z component divided by delta t. And so this gives us what the components are for the average velocity. So two things. One is, notice this equation. I have a vector that's made by taking another vector, the displacement, and multiplying it by 1 over delta t. And since time, final time minus initial time, is always going to be a positive quantity, 1 over delta t is also a positive quantity, which tells me that I'm taking the displacement vector and multiplying it by something positive, a positive scalar. And we know that when we multiply a vector by a positive scalar, we don't change its direction. You can stretch it out or compress it, but you don't change its direction. So what that tells us is that the average velocity vector has to point in the same direction as the displacement. In terms of the components of the average velocity vector, well again, it's just sort of equating what's going on here in front of the i-hat with what's going on here in front of the i-hat. So the x component of the average velocity vector is just delta x over delta t. Same thing's true for y, same thing's true for z. We're just switching which coordinate it, it is that we're talking about so that our y component cares about the change in y, our z component cares about the change in z.
And again, the average velocity as a vector points in the same direction as the displacement. All right. The last average quantity we'll talk about is average acceleration. And it's the same idea. It's saying, well, now what I'm interested in is the change in velocity. The only fundamental difference is the change in velocity doesn't have a special name. Change in position does. We call that the displacement. Change in velocity doesn't have its own name. So we just continually refer to this as the change in velocity. But the idea is the same. The average acceleration is just the change in velocity vector divided by, again, the time it takes to go from the initial point to the final point. So we break this vector equation up into three component equations that we multiply by our unit vectors. So again, this tells us that the components of the average acceleration are the change in the x component of the velocity divided by delta t, that's going to get you the x component of the average acceleration. The change in the y component of the velocity divided by delta t, that gets you the y component of the average acceleration. Change in the z component of the velocity divided by delta t gets you the z component of the average acceleration. So in the same way that we said we're going to care about the components of our position vectors to figure out the displacement, we're going to care about the components of our velocity vectors to calculate the average acceleration. And again, you'll notice I'm taking the change in velocity vector and multiplying it by 1 over delta t, a positive scalar again, to get the average acceleration. So what this means is that the average acceleration vector has to point in the same direction as the change in velocity. Not the velocity, the change in velocity. So here's my initial velocity vector, let's say. Here's my final velocity vector. So the average acceleration points in the direction of the change in velocity vector. The velocity vector runs from the end of my initial velocity to the end of my final velocity. That has to be the same as the direction of the average acceleration.